Hey everyone, it's Warriors NRL Fanatics here. Hope you're all doing well. But before getting into this video, just quickly, if you are a new viewer to this channel and you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click that red subscribe button down below because it really does help and it shows your support for the videos and the channel as well and uh, it's much appreciated. Also, don't forget to like this video as well. Click the thumbs up on the video. Share this video around and uh, click the bell so you are notified when I upload next or when I go live on the channel. But, boy, it's getting very close, isn't it? The 2023 NRL season. I can't wait for it. I'm excited. I'm pumped. I am looking forward to it. And the, the most interesting thing is and the hardest thing to do and that is to predict which team finishes in what position on the ladder this season now look i think there will be some teams that will rise into the top eight but i reckon there will be some teams that will be in the top eight again this year or teams that will stay relatively same in that top four so before getting into my ladder predictions just quickly just letting you know that these are just my opinions. So if you don't agree with what I say about your team in the position on the ladder, please don't get upset. Please don't be disappointed because anything is possible in the NRL. You know, I could be wrong. I could be proven wrong, which, you know, I'd rather be proven wrong than right, actually. So, look, if I pick a team in a certain position and you're disappointed and upset, well, look, it's just... You know, at the end of that, it's just my opinion. But, anyways, we'll get into it now. So, the predictions for the season, starting off with 17th, last spot on the ladder, as there are 17 teams this year because of the Dolphins' inclusion into the NRL. So, 17th, as my wooden spooners. Now, I have got the St. George Illawarra Dragons. Now... A lot of people are going to be shocked and surprised with that prediction, which I understand. The main reason why I've gone with the Dragons in last spot on the ladder this year is because I don't like the looks of this squad in terms of depth. I think their depth is a real concern going into this year. Now, they are going to be relying on a lot of pl play with Ben Hunt. Junior Amone as well, a very young player as well. We don't know what's going to happen there. Is he going to be starting? You know, you know. also, Zach Lomax. Now, Zach Lomax can be a player which can be hot and cold at the same time. He can be a great player on his day, but he also can be a player that can have a few games where, you know, he does some silly things on the field. So, look, for me, I, unfortunately... Sorry to say it, Dragons fans. I just don't see this year being a good season for the Dragons. I think last year they struggled too. And I think Anthony Griffin as the coach is going to be under massive pressure. Now, I think the Dragons, if they do m miss the finals this year, I reckon that Anthony Griffin will probably get the sack. And I think he'll be, he could be the first one to get the sack. I know that's a bold prediction out of, out of there. But I think the Dragons personally just will struggle this year, going by what I believe, what I've seen with the squad that they've named, and, and the signings, the lack of signings that they've made also, so unfortunately for the Dragons, I just think they will struggle. Now, 16th spot on the NRL 2023 ladder, I have gone with the, the new franchise, the new club, that is the Dolphins. Now, look, I think Look, the Dolphins, I know I know people will probably say that's a bit harsh to have the Dolphins there in their first season. But you gotta be completely honest and fair that no teams comes no team comes into the NRL and, and performs and be a top eight team straight away in their first year. So look, I think the Dolphins will definitely be a top eight contender in the next couple of seasons. But this first year I just think they will struggle. Now they'll definitely get a few wins. But I just don't think that'll be enough to avoid the top, the uh, bottom four this year. So, look, I mean, if you look at this squad, they've got a lot of experienced players coming in. Some some older heads, especially with the likes of the Bromwich brothers. And you've also got the likes of Felice Kafusi coming from the Melbourne Storm also. 
And um, look, I think a player for me to watch is definitely Sean O'Sullivan this year and the likes of Eliza Katoa as well. I think Eliza Katoa, especially being that young, being that Tongan side at the World Cup last year, I think he's a, a player to look out for for me for the Dolphins. So, look, I think Wayne Bennett is a coach you never write off. You know, he's been there, done it before. He's been ridden off by a lot of people. You know, he's coached many teams, the South City Rabbitohs. You know, he's coached the Knights. He's he's been to the Broncos as well, taking teams to finals. But I just think it's going to be a bit of a stretch for the Dolphins this year in terms of being a you know top eight contender or avoiding that top avoiding that bottom four spot. So yeah, look the Dolphins for me, but look out for them in the next couple of years. I think they're definitely a club that could potentially be a top eight contender. Now, 15th spot on the ladder, I have gone with the West Tigers. Now, look, I think a lot of people might not like this prediction, but I think for me, the West Tigers are a team which are called the unpredictable. They are called the unpredictable. You just don't know what to expect. They're just like my Warriors, you know. They're just like my team, the Warriors. You You don't know what to expect with the West Tigers going into this year. Now, Tim Sheens comes on board, taking over from Michael Maguire. They've got ben- they've got Benji Marshall in the coaching staff as well. They, you know, yeah, they're a hard team to get a read on this, this year. They really are. I don't know what to expect. They've got some very good young young players as well, West Tigers. You know, you've got the likes of Sean Bohr, Sean Bloor. They've got, uh, you know, they've... I I just you know the 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 talk's gonna be what's Luke Brooks gonna do this year? You know the 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 Tigers have put lots and lots of faith in Luke Brooks for the past couple of years. You know, is he gonna be a lot better? Is he going to improve this year? Is he gonna show his true potential as a player? Because that is the biggest question mark for me. So look, I mean. West Tigers, I mean, not not really more I can add on to the West Tigers, especially in this one. So, look, I, I could be wrong. I mean, I, I could be wrong. They could be a team that avoids the bottom four. They could potentially make the top eight, but look, I just don't see it happening. So, here, I've got them in 15th. On to 14th now, and I have gone with the Newcastle Knights. Now, the Newcastle Knights, last year, I had them... As my wooden spoon is. Now they didn't finish in the wooden spoon position. So I was completely wrong with that. So, But they still finish in the bottom half of the ladder. So yeah. the, the Look for me. The Knights going into this year. Are a team where they could be a top 8 contender. Or they could be a bottom 4 contender. And I've got them in my bottom four, mainly because I don't know... Look, I don't know how this spine's going to go. I mean, Braley... Um, you got Jaden Braley at hooker there. Jaden Braley last year was injured for the majority of the year, which was a massive effect on the Newcastle Knights here. Kalen Ponga, you know, is already coming to this season with an injury concern already. And we haven't started the year, which is a bit of a worry... There's talks that Kalen Ponga will be in the halves. <sighs> uh, Newcastle Knights, you know, they they brought they brought in Jackson Hastings as, as a massive as a massive signing for them um, from the West Tigers. But is Jackson Hastings going to be that big of a difference? You know, he's a great player, very very important to the Newcastle Knights. But you know, they're going to need a lot more than the likes of Kalen Ponga. You know, Jackson Hastings, they're going to need a lot more than this, those players just to push them into a top eight contention. So, yeah, look, um, you know, they also signed uh, Lachlan Miller from the Cronulla Sharks as well. And I believe he's going to be their fullback. But, yeah, look, for me, you know, you got, you got Saifidi as well there for the Newcastle Knights and Dave, Daniel Saifidi. Uh, you got Clemmer, you know. But, yeah, look, I, I just think they will, 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 will miss the top eight. <sighs> for, for me, yeah, I, I've been, 
I, I, there's not really more I can add on from Newcastle especially. But, again, I could be wrong. Newcastle Knights, you know, I, I think from, for me that... Uh, I, I think Adam O'Brien will be a coach under pressure this year as well as... You know, I think he's another coach under pressure also with Anthony Griffin. So, look, I, I think that would just be in the bottom four for me. On to 13th spot on the NRL ladder for the season. I have gone with the Gold Coast Titans. Now, I probably will cop some stick for this one. I know they've got Kieran Foran coming to the side this year. I think he will... Add a bit of experience to the halves that they really need. And I think he's going to be a key player. He's going to be important to them moving forward. But, look, I like the looks of their four-pack. I reckon their four-pack's great. You know, you got the thief, you got both Wormall. you got David for feeder, you got Tino for Sumalawi. You know, Tino, especially last year, I thought had a great year for the Gold Coast Titans. I think he was one of the most important players for them. Both Vermont, especially, I do rate really highly. You've also got... Uh, you've got a very young young spine. You've got Campbell. you got Brimson. You know. Yeah, it, it's, it's going to be an interesting year. It's going to be an interesting year for the Gold Coast Titans. You know, the, the Titans could be a team where they could be finishing in between 13th, 12th, 11th, 10th. Or I could potentially be a top eight side, but it all just has to depend on how it all gels with with the side moving forward. So I think Kieran Foran for me is a key player to the side. If he plays well and he gels with those players in the side and the four pack gets going, I think the Titans could, could be a team that make the top eight this year. But look, I think they will. I think they'll just uh, yeah miss out. I don't think they'll be bottom four this year. I think they will just be. In 13th there. So. You know, on to 12th now. So 12th is interesting. Now. I may cop a bit of criticism for this one. I've gone with the Canberra Raiders in 12th. Now Canberra Raiders did well to make the top 8 last year. Uh, they had a very slow start to the season. There was a bit of turn, turn, turn more as, as well off the field. Um, you know, there was there was a lot going on with the Canberra Raiders at the back at the start of this of the start of the twenty twenty two season. So, look, I mean, Jack Whiten, Jamal Fogarty, they've got a good four pack as well. The Canberra Raiders, but is there enough consistency in results to see them make the top eight this year? I think they will just. I think they'll miss out. I think there's a few teams already ahead of them, and uh, look, I I do like the Canberra Raiders. You know, they're a team that I would love to see do well this season, but I I just think that they yeah, yeah we'll finish in 12th spot. Now on to 11th spot. This is going to be a very controversial prediction. And this is a team that's really hyped up going into this season with the off-season signings that they've made. Gus Gould has really gone all out to get this Bulldogs team to be competitive again. They've got Cameron Serrato coming in as a coach in his first year in the NRL coaching, coming from the Penrith system. Boy, this team is... There's a lot of excitement around them. And that is the Canterbury... Bankstown Bulldogs. Now, the Bulldogs to me are a team where they could be massive improvers or they could underachieve with the squad that they have have this year. Now, I think a lot of people have the Bulldogs doing well this year. They, a lot of people have them you know, being a team that could be contention for the top eight. Now, no doubt about it, I reckon they could be a, a team contention for the top eight. But is it going to be a straightforward thing this year? Is it going to happen sh straight away? 
because last year the Bulldogs did start the season off very slowly. There was talks that the Bulldogs could improve, and it didn't quite happen. They had a great back end of the year, especially. Uh, I mean, you got Viliami Kikau coming. You got Reed Marnie. Two very big off-season signings uh, from t- from two teams that made the grand final last year, Parramatta and Penrith. Uh, you know, are, are they going to make that much of a difference? I think Viliami Kikau will have will do well. I think Reed Marnie is a player which will add a lot more, but the other positions, especially, are still debatable in the side. The fullback spot, who's going to be the fullback? You got Josh Adekar, he'll be on the wing there. So, yeah, look, I mean, I, I, I just have them in eleventh. I, I, I think it's. I think next year, personally, for me, they will probably be in the top eight. And uh, I don't know. I just don't see them pushing out other teams into that top eight spot. So, I'll, I'll go eleventh. I, I think they will be challenging for top eight spot this year, but I think they'll just miss out. On to tenth spot on the ladder for me. I have gone with the Manly. Warringah Seagulls. Now, the, the, the Manly Seagulls come into this year with a new coach in An- Anthony Seabolt. Anthony Seabolt's come on board, and now he is coached. He's been coaching in, in English Rugby Union. He's coached the South City Rabbitohs in the NRL. He's coached the the Brisbane Broncos as well. Now, the Brisbane Broncos, obviously, he did not have the best of times here coaching that side. He really struggled to get them going. He did well against. He did it well with the South City Rabbitohs, no doubt about it. Uh, he did get coach of the year that year. But it, it's going to be interesting to see how Anthony Seawalt can get this side to gel. Last year, the Manly Seagulls, unfortunately for them, that jersey... Jersey saga really affected their season. Now they were potentially in a chance to make the top eight last year, up and up until that Jersey situation. So this year, look, I think you know if you look at this squad, you know they're going to miss Kieran Foran. I think that's a big blow for them. Josh Schuster. Now that's going to be interesting to see how Josh Schuster goes because uh, he's going to be a player that will probably be in the halves with Cherry Evans, so that will be interesting. Now, Tommy Trevojevic, Tommy Turbo, he is a player that's been, you know, been good for the Seagulls for the past couple of years, but unfortunately last year, injury really hampered his season. Injuries have really affected Tommy T- Trevojevic, and look, I love watching Tommy Trevojevic as a player. He's one of my favourite players in the game, and, you know, you don't like to see... You know, players like him sitting on the sideline, and and it really does affect the Seagulls a lot. And I hope that the off season from for Tommy Trevojevic, especially with him going over to America to try and get some treatment uh, and try and you know get some recovery in to to be fit and firing for this year. I hope it really does help him, and I hope he has a big. 2023 season so look I mean Manly you know the side with the likes of Hamoli Olukowatu you got Ruben Garrick there very good good reliable player there on the wing and a good goal kicker as well you know so you got Morgan Harper you know another player in the centers there and um, it's going to be interesting to see how Jason Sub goes this year, who I think he had a bit of a backwards year last year, unfortunately. I don't know what happened to Jason Sub after a very good uh, 2021 season. So, yeah, look, um, I can see Manly really challenging for a top eight spot, but that all depends on a fully fit Tommy Trevojevic. Uh, so, they, they'll... For me, I just think they'll finish in 10th spot. On to 9th spot now. And 
This this is gonna be a big call. It's a massive call. I've gone with the Cronulla Sharks, and I know people are gonna call me crazy, call me ridiculous, call me stupid, say that I'm on drugs. You know, what are you thinking? Why do you have them there? Well, look, I think last year the Sharks did well. They had a great season. Nico Hines was a massive standout. He won the Dally M Player of the Year. Look, uh, for me, Nicholas Hines this year is another player that's going to be key for the Cronulla Sharks moving forward. Matt Moylan, I thought, had a good year last year as well for the Sharks, especially. I think he was. I think he had an underrated year actually, and Matt Moylan's had some injury concerns that has really affected him. And, and Ronaldo Mulitalo as well is is another player for the Sharks who's one of one of the most you know one of, one of the most top five top six wingers in the game for me and you know he knows how to find the try line especially and he got a very good four pack as well for the Sharks as well so look you know there's a team that can can have a good season the previous year and. and a team that can following season can struggle. So it's a massive call. I know it's a massive call. I know a lot of people will probably say that the Sharks should be in your top four. I get that. I understand that because last year they had such a great year. But I think I think this is a year where the Sharks could miss out. And I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And, and last year, I did have them in my top four, the Sharks, and, and they did make the top four. So, I don't know. I just I just see some. I just see the Sharks just missing out this year in that top eight spot. So, yeah, I, I've got them in ninth. On to eighth spot now. And, look, eighth spot for me, and I know people are going to call me biased and one-eyed for this one. I've got the Warriors, the one New Zealand Warriors, in 8th. Now, I had the Warriors in my top 8 last year, and I was completely wrong. We finished 15th. We almost finished with the winner spoon. We were very close to finishing last. We were lucky to not get that spoon. So, look, as, 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 a, as a fan, as a Warriors fan especially, you've got to back, you got to back your team in, and even if it sounds unrealistic, even though it sounds like it's going to be a massive rise for for a new coach to come in and just push us into the top eight, well, I think you look at our squad, the signings we've made, Tamare Martin, Luke Metcalf, uh, you've got Mitchell Barnett, you got Dylan Walker, to name a few. I, you know, you, you're not a real fan if you don't back your team to make the top eight. You really aren't a real fan if you don't back your team to be in the finals. So, as biased as the sounds and, and and ridiculous as it sounds, I'm putting my team in the top eight. I reckon the Warriors can be in the top eight this year. And I reckon a lot of people will have the Warriors bottom four as one of the Spooners, but I just got them in my top eight. On to seventh now, on the ladder now. And I have gone... With the Brisbane Broncos. I think the Brisbane Broncos will rise and make the top eight this year. Now, they could be a team that could make the top four. They could potentially make the top four. Now, the Brisbane Broncos, uh, there is a, a lot of talk that they, you know, have signed great players. You know, they signed the likes of Reese Walsh from the Warriors, who's coming in. They got... Uh, you got they've got Patrick Carrigan there, who I thought was great last year. They've got uh, Adam Reynolds. They've got uh, you know they got a good four pack. They got Jordan Ricky. You know they've, they've got a team very capable of finishing inside the top eight. So that's personally what I believe. I think they will finish in the top eight this year. I think they'll finish seventh. They could finish a lot higher than seventh possibly, but. I think this is the year that the Broncos, and if they don't make the top eight this year, another thing is that Kevin Walters, I think maybe a coach also being talked about as coach under pressure. So Broncos for me, seventh. Now on to sixth spot. 
on the ladder for me in terms of this prediction. I have gone with the Parramatta Eels, the Parramatta Eels. Now, the Parramatta Eels had a very good year last year. Unfortunately for them, they just came up against a, a high-quality, classy Penrith Panthers side. And again, a team where a lot of people always talk about the premiership drought and Parramatta being the chokers when it comes to big games and finals. Now, I don't personally think last year in the grand final they choked. I think they just came up against the Panthers team which were far too good, you know, throughout the season. Penrith were always going to win that grand final. They were always favourites going into it. Despite Parramatta, you know, getting the win over the Cowboys in that preliminary final up in North Queensland, I think it was always going to be a tough ass in that game on grand final day. So, look, I mean, Parramatta have lost some players in the off-season. Reed Marnie especially is a big loss to the club. But they still have Dylan Brown. They still have Mitchell Moses. They still have Clinton Gutherson in the fullback spot. They've still got a very good four pack. They've got Sean Lane as well in the second row. I mean, Parramatta for me, look, I'm not saying they will be in the grand final this year. I don't think they will be in the grand final personally this season. But I think they will still definitely be a top six team. So I've got them in sixth spot. And I reckon they will still be up there come the back end of the year. Now on to fifth spot on the NRL ladder for this year. I have gone with the North Queensland Cowboys. Now the Cowboys last year shocked a lot of experts. They shocked a lot of content creators, especially myself how they were very close to a grand final appearance, only losing in the preliminary finals in Townsville. When boy, Todd Payton had a great year. He turned the Cowboys season around from a tough 2021 to a top four spot. He got the coach of the year. Jason Tamalolo had a great year last year. The rise of Jeremiah Nunai. The rise of Scott Drinkwater. You, know, you, you can name plenty of players. Ruben Cotter. What a year Ruben Cotter had in 2022. Made the state of origin Queensland Maroons side. And he was one of the standouts as well in that Maroons team last year. So, look. I mean, the Cowboys for me go into this year as a team where I just don't see them missing out on the top eight again. Top eight the season I you know they will come close to a top four spot I think for me but I think they will just miss out on fourth spot so I think the Cowboys for me will be fifth and, and I really wouldn't be surprised if they have another good season on to fourth spot now on the ladder and I know people are going to say Melbourne Storm's depth is a concern this year Melbourne have lost a lot of players. We say this every year with the Storm. I know they missed the top four last year for the first time in a long time. But do not write this team off. Do not write them off. Yes, they've lost, lost the Bromwich Brothers. Yes, they've lost Felice Kafusi. But this team is a team where you cannot right off. Melbourne Storm will finish fourth. They will finish in the top four. Now, a player to look out for me for Melbourne this year has probably got to be Elias Sakatoa from the New Zealand Warriors. I think Elias Sakatoa will feature quite a lot in the regular side throughout this year. Probably off the bench. Probably maybe starting potentially. I think Craig Bellamy is a coach that will get the best out of Elias Katoa. You know, when players leave certain clubs, they go to successful teams and they usually have a big difference. So, 
The Melbourne Storm for me, you know, you've just still got a very strong back line. You've got Cameron Munster in the halves. you got Jerome Hughes. you got Ryan Pappenhausen, when he's fully fit, is re- it's it's a very good spine there. And I know the biggest loss for the Melbourne Storm is also Brandon Smith as well, who left to go to the Sydney Roosters at also. But I, I think Melbourne, you know, generally they find a very young player uh, and they bring them in and, and they make a big difference. Obviously, the concern for me for Melbourne is probably the... the uh, Backline especially. Melbourne usually do have a very good backline, but that's probably a bit of a concern going into this year as well. So, look, I think Melbourne for me, top four, yeah, you know, whether you like them, whether you dislike them, Melbourne will, will, for me will be back up there this year and will be a contender in 2023. Now, third spot on my ladder, I have gone with the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Now, actually, I am very high on the South Sydney Rabbitohs this this season. Now, I think last year the Rabbitohs did very well. I mean, Jason Demetriou in his first year coaching in the NRL, the Rabbitohs. I know this; they didn't beat Penrith in the big games, you know, but I think they 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 had a very good year. I think they really did, and. Cameron Munster, uh, Cameron, Mur- Cameron Munster, sorry, Cameron Murray. I don't know why I said Cameron Munster, probably because I was talking about Melbourne only a long ago, but Cameron Murray is an absolute unit. He's an absolute beast. He's one of my favourite players to watch for South Sydney. Puts in a lot of work on the field, doesn't make a lot of errors, and I thought Cameron Murray had a very good year last year. I think he led the team across the field quite well. And, and, you know, also, I thought Lachlan Elias had a very... I think he had a slow start to the year, but he stand, started to find his form at the back end of the year, especially. So, I think Lachlan Elias comes into this year with, you know, with a lot more experience under about playing in the NRL, and I think he'll be a player which will show a lot of improvement this year for South Sydney, especially. Then you've got Harvili as well, who who uh, plays in the back row. He's another very good signing that Celts made last year, and I thought he was very good also. So, yeah, look, I mean, this Bunnies team, you know, you also got Alex Johnson there on the wing, who is very underrated, always up there in the top try scorers list, and he will be a weapon for South Sydney this season also. So, you know, also, I also forgot to mention Latrell Mitchell. Latrell Mitchell, whether you like him, whether you dislike him, Latrell Mitchell is an X-Factor player. For me, I love watching Latrell Mitchell play. You know, I think he's... I think the only thing I don't like with Latrell Mitchell is he can have... A, can be a little bit of a grub at times, but, you know, as a player, he's very passionate about the jersey, and he brings a lot to South Sydney. So, I think Latrell Mitchell especially um, is going to have a big 2023 season. So, yeah, that is it. Uh, that is it for me in terms of Rabbitohs and where I, I reckon they finish. I reckon they'll finish third. On to second spot on the NRL ladder. It is the back-to-back NRL premiers. And that is the Penrith Panthers. Now, the Penrith Panthers come into this year with a, with a target on their backs. But they had a target on their backs last year. And they passed that with flying colours, winning the Premiership again, winning the minor Premiership also. And boy, that club had a great year, especially when you look at their juniors winning as well, the New South Wales Cup team winning. The Panthers have just got squad depth across the field, and they do lose a couple of players this year with Viliami Kikau going to going to the Bulldogs. You know, they, they've lost some players there in itself, but the Panthers... Look, I think for me, also, they've lost episode Coruscant as well. It is a massive blow for them. So the biggest talk is going to be who's going to be in their nine this year. Who's going to be their hooker? But, again, they still have Nathan Cleary, Jerome Luai. Nathan Cleary, for me, was the best player in the game last year. And, uh, 
you know, they've got Dylan Edwards as well. Dylan Edwards, boy, he is such an underrated player. What a year he had last year for the Panthers especially. So I just personally, for me, just don't see this Panthers team slipping anytime soon. And uh, look, I wouldn't be surprised if they finish first again, but I've got them in second spot. Now, on to my minor premiers now. First spot on the ladder for this year. Uh, look, for me, I can't go past the Sydney Roosters, the the Eastern Suburbs, the the Roosters. To me, strong side across the field. James Tedesco fullback. You've got Joey Manu. You've got Luke Carey and, and Sam Walker. You know, you've also... Got a very good four pack as well. Hardgraves, Jerry Hardgraves. You got Isaac Liu, you know, just to name a few players. Roosters are going to be a team will be very hard to beat this season. So I know I had them as minor premiers last year and they didn't make they didn't even finish in the top four. So I just think if the Roosters stay injury free and their squad gels together, they're going to be very dangerous going into this season. So, guys, that is it. That is my 2023 NRL ladder predictions for this season. Uh, let me know your predictions down in the comments below. And, uh, yeah, if you are a new viewer to this channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click that red subscribe button down below. It's much appreciated. It really shows your support for the content. And also... I'm on the road to 3K subscribers. So on the road to 3K subscribers. Let's see if we can get there by the end of the season. And let's see if we can get to the 2,200 subscriber mark as well. Make sure you like this video as well. And I'll see you all in the next one.